gonna go ahead and pray for us. Father God, we are so grateful for the opportunity to gather in your name, to gather in your house with your family, with your children, to know that we are together, that we're not alone, that we are loved, and that we most importantly identify as children of God. With one another, we are so honored and so blessed to be here, to gather one another here at St. Matthew. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Welcome, everyone. We are so glad that you're here joining us at St. Matthew. I am not Marco. Marco is usually <laughs> here leading us in worship. I'm Becca, if you don't know who I am. We were able to send Marco off into the mountains this weekend, so he is very <laughs> happy. I didn't personally send him. It was his own decision. He is camping. I didn't send him anywhere. He will be back. But we are, we're excited that he's getting to take a little vacation this weekend, and we are also really happy to be here leading you guys. If it is your first time, we're so glad you're here. They would love to meet you up at the welcome table right outside. You can take a welcome card out there, and that's how you can let us know how we can be praying for you or getting you plugged in here. But other than that, we're just excited to keep moving with our service, and we are glad that you're here.
Have you ever been in a storm? A a storm might look like the cancer's back. A A storm might look like The job that you thought was perfect isn't looking so good. The the relationship that you thought was solid is falling apart. I imagine you, like me, have been in the middle of a storm. What did we just sing? Uh, We sang about singing in the middle of those storms because the King Jesus is alive. And so we anchor our hearts to that in the middle of the storms of life that we find ourselves in because this life is going to be full of storms. You will get on calm seas and the wind and the waves are going to come up again. And we can get torn down and crippled by those storms. Or we can remember that as we are feeling the wind and the waves, that we have a Savior that has overcome the world, overcome those storms, and stands with us in those storms. We know that we have a God who is not far from us in the midst of our suffering. I want to share with you these words from 2 Corinthians. Praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. And so today we we come before our God and confess that sometimes we don't believe he's big enough for our storm. And sometimes he's the last resort instead of the first option. And so we come before our God now and ask that he would help us to look to him no matter what storms may come and trust in him in the middle of it. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you this day and we confess that at times we don't think we are big enough for the storm. We confess that sometimes we turn to other things before we turn to you and we ask that you would help us. Help us look to you. Help us trust in you. Help us know that you are with us in the middle of the storm. Help us to find trust and hope, knowing that on the last day, all storms will cease and everything will be made right, and that you are with us in the middle of all this mess, and that you have overcome it all and called us your own. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our risen one. Amen. Our God is with us in the middle of all of it. And because he's with us in the middle of it, he knows it all from beginning to end. And therefore, there is nothing that you can do that can separate you from his love and his grace. And therefore, it is my privilege to announce God's goodness to you. Your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. May his spirit make that real to your hearts this day. can be seated for this song. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. Of the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am in Oh, I will sing of the goodness 
person next to you, go ahead and say hello, greet them this morning, and once you've done that, go ahead and send your kiddos on up for the children's message with Pastor Brad. Good morning, everybody. Pastor Brad got a little taller, a little younger. And actually, for our children's message, you guys get to do something special today. We are sending somebody on a mission trip, and you guys are going to get to help me bless them and send them off. Does that sound like fun? All right. So let's welcome our, our team that's going to Holbrook, Arizona, uh, to come on forward. And then you guys, you don't get to sit here like this. I'm going to have you guys stand around them. So everybody hop up and then take a couple of steps down onto the floor down there. And as our team comes up, we're going to surround them. And I'm going to invite you guys to hold hands because we're going to pray for them, okay? So circle around. So take a couple steps back. Madeline right there, get beside her, make a line. And then Benjamin's in the line. Britta's in the line. Josiah's in the line. So here, go up oh, this way. Everybody over here. Go over there by them. There we go. There we go. All right. And then all of our team are going to come up here in front of them. So, Bo, would you go stand by Esme right there? There you go. Oh, 
Quentin, go stand over there by Britta. There we go. All right, yes, there we go. You want to face this way because they're going to stand in front of you guys. Uh-oh. We lost coffee. That, you know what? That's what this floor is for. It's for spilling coffee. It's okay in here. I'm not calling you out, I promise. It's okay. People usually dump my coffee, actually, is what happens. All right, and then we could get our, our team up here in front of all the kids. Uh, Quentin, would you go stand back there by Benjamin? Take your line right there. There we go. All right. And then you, face, you can face me. I won't make you face them. We'll be nice. I'll have you turn around at the end like we did in the last service. Uh, in a couple of weeks, uh, six people from St. Matthew will be traveling to Holbrook, Arizona to do an exploratory mission trip with the Native American Christian Academy. Uh, Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you've been asked to serve our Lord Jesus Christ by traveling to Holbrook, Arizona to love the Native American Christian Academy School. As you share life and food, may he also give you the opportunity to share Jesus through your actions and words. Thank you for giving of your time and of yourselves to make this happen. Hear what scripture has to say about the work that we are to do for the kingdom of God. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. In the presence of God and these gathered here this morning, I commission you to this work for which you have been called. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, now we're going to pray, everybody. Loving Father, you've called us to be your witnesses, sharing your words of hope and life and serving others. Pour your blessing out on these you have committed to doing this work for you and your kingdom, that your word may touch their hearts and lives and all those that you bring them into contact with during this time of service, bringing growth to your church through Jesus our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Almighty and most merciful God, our Heavenly Father, enlighten and strengthen you for the responsibilities and tasks that lay ahead of you as you work for his kingdom, that you may be good and faithful servants of the word, to the glory of his name and the salvation of his people. Go in the peace of God. All right. And then kids, you get to lead us and clap for them as uh, they uh, get ready to go on this trip. All right. And then kids, you can head off to Children's Church. Thanks for coming up and helping with this. And our team can head out as well. Thank you guys for coming up. So I'm Brad, one of the pastors here. It's great to be with you today. You know, I was driving in this morning, uh, and I I don't know why. um, There's this old, old song, and the words are really simple. In my life, Lord, be glorified. You know that song? And then the second verse is in my church, Lord, rather in your church. And the church is not a building. uh, It's not an institution. It's the people. It's the people. Because the very word church, ecclesia, means a gathering of God's people. Would you sing that with me? In my life, Lord. Ready? In my life. Lord, be glorified, be glorified in my life. Lord, be glorified today in your church. In your church, Lord, be glorified, be glorified in your church. Lord, be glorified today. Dear Jesus, we pray that, that in our lives, uh, as you make your home within us, we might glorify your name. Uh, and we pray, Lord, that uh, as your people gather together, we might glorify your name uh, today in worship uh, and throughout our lives. We pray in Jesus' name and all God's people say, Amen. Welcome to everybody who's here, Uh, also welcome to those who are online, Uh, this thing called the family of God, the ecclesia, we're not bound by space and time, we're connected uh, through this uh, connection to Jesus, and he's everywhere, he's true man and true God, Uh, and so we're family, it's great to have you with us in person, online, may God uh, bless you today. 
So if you're just walking in here for the first uh, time the last three weeks, uh, you're, you're walking in and you're saying, what's this all about? This is a, a, might be a nice little film, but why do they have that on the screen, inside out? Uh, you know, and and wh- wh- what are they doing here? It's supposed to be church, you know? It's not supposed to be movie time. And, and, and we, we do this once in a while because uh, the, the more we look at the stories we tell, uh, not, not just modern stories, uh, but, but ancient stories and stories all the way through, we, we tell these stories because we live our lives in stories to try to answer these these questions that we have, these, these questions that are shrouded in, in mystery. Uh, uh, a great example for me is they call them the, the ancient stories in Greece, the Greek tragedies. Why is it, why is it the, great, the, the, the Greek joyous times? Because they're trying to explain tragedy, huh? They're trying to explain the brokenness. They're trying to explain life. Uh, this movie, Inside Out, it, it tries to answer some of those basic questions. Uh, the, the first title, uh, two, two weeks ago, we, we looked at this. It was, um, what makes Riley, Riley? And it's the idea of identity. Who we are. What does it mean to be alive? Uh, and, and it's a great mystery for us. And, and humankind has always asked this mystery, and we are so focused on that, even in our present time. Who, who am I? Who are we? What's it all about? And, and this movie, it, it, it gets into that, right? And it, it says what, and, and, and we entitled this, What Makes Riley, Riley. Uh, go ahead, put that up. And, and in this movie, it says the islands of personality is what makes Riley, Riley. Uh, uh, and these islands of personality, they're, they're tied to memories and core memories, which are tied uh, to, to our emotions, joy uh, and, and, and fear and, and, saw, and, and sadness and, 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 and despising things. It's tied to all those things. And it says, you put all these things together, right? And, 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 and this is who we are. This is what makes Riley, Riley. Her personality is what makes her who she are, who she is, rather. And, and through all of this, by the way, there's this, tension between uh, joy and, and uh, uh, kind of, an- we said, we've talked about anthropomorphism. It, it, they, they take this emotion and they make it a little figure, right? Between joy and sadness. What the heck is sadness doing there? It's got nothing good at all, huh? And, 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 and so we, we looked at that and we said, well, what do you think? Is, is that true? Is all we are a collection of our memories? Is that who forms us? Is that what we're about? And, and it's kind of true, but I think we all know there's something more to humankind, right? There's something more to being alive. And, and I think that God meets us there in that mystery, in that question. And, and he says this, let us make humankind in our image. And, and what is that image? It's relationship. He's dwelled together from eternity to eternity in relationship of love as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And when he created us in his image, he created us to, to, to be included in that relationship and through that in relationship with one another. We're, we're more than just our, our physical bodies and, and, and our physical realities. And we know that, right? I mean, every human being seems to know that. And, and that's what God says. We're created in his image. And, 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 and I think that the, that, that the movie gets us that life is this wondrous, awesome thing, joy. It, that, I mean, the first thing, the movie opens up with, she's just amazed at life. And it lasts about 33 seconds, and then there's tears, remember? Well, you know, that's kind of what God says. Everything was perfect. It was good, it was good, it was good, and then there's tears because we turned away from who we are. We call that sin. Walked away from relationship with God. And by the way, through that relationship with one another. In fact, the Bible says this, Adam had a son in his likeness. We lost the image of God. But the story God gives us, reveals to us, says that he loves us so much that he wants to restore that image. And in Jesus, he's doing just that. If anyone is in Christ, what, what does that mean, in Christ? Well, Jesus came uh, to repair that relationship through the forgiveness of our sins. You receive that in this relationship of trust called faith. And you're a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. What, 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 what is this new? We're being transformed into Christ's likeness all over again. And we, who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory, and 
(laughs) What is that glory finally? That glory is the cross. That glory is the fact that he loved us so much that Jesus died for us. Every single parent here knows exactly what I'm talking about. The greatest glory for a parent is to love your child and give and give, lay down your life for them. Amen? Amen. I remember holding Sarah. She was like, you know, five minutes in my arms, and I was saying, man, I'll go through a brick wall for you, kid. I'll lay down my life. That's no problem at all, huh? That's a glory to it. That's what Jesus did for you. And he did it for the joy set before him to have a relationship with you. And we're being transformed into that relationship, that light is every single day with ever increasing glory, more and more living in the grace, the love of God in Jesus Christ, with God and with one another, till finally we're received in the glory, new heavens and a new earth, and it's completed. So we are. Humankind struggles with it. It's a movie. Try saying, who, what makes Riley Riley? What makes us us? This is it. Last week, we looked at the title, Riley Loses Herself. Even though we know all this stuff, sometimes we lose ourselves, right? How can I survive when my world implodes? Has that ever happened to you? With Riley, she moved from Minnesota to San Francisco, and her whole world was down the, was down the drain. She went to, to, to school, and, and, and she started to cry, and so she was isolated and alone, and she started shutting down. Everything was shutting down, and, 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 and because there was no joy anymore, it got lost in her brain. She, she, she now, her other emotions took over. That ever happened to you, by the way? And she hurt her mother and father, and she stole from her mom, and, and, and now she's going to get out of there, and she's completely shut down. She's not feeling a thing. Ever happened to you? Go ahead. Have you ever not survived? I don't mean physically, the heart beating, but the essence of who you are, or, or come close to it? Everything's shutting down like Riley. That's what we talked about last week. And Jesus comes to us and he says, repent for the kingdom of God is near. And we think of repent and say, oh, I gotta gotta fix my life. That's not what the word means. The word means to change your mind. Come to your senses. Remember who you are and who God is. Today, we ask a simple question, just like the movie does. How does this happen? That's what the movie explores today. You know, what makes Riley Riley? What happens when she crashes and burns and she loses herself? And, and how is she rescued? How is she rescued? It starts the place of sadness. And if you watch the movie, you know right from the very beginning, Joy is trying to, what is sadness doing here anyway? And she even has, she draws a circle with chalk and says, stay in the circle, don't touch anything, sadness, right? It's a major question of the movie. And it comes into play in how Riley is rescued and how we are rescued when we lose ourselves, when we shut down when we're isolated, alone, we can't feel anything, when we lash out, until finally we can't, we're, we're not there anymore. In this film clip, uh, uh, Joy, who is kind of lost in, in Riley's brain now, she can't get back to headquarters, and she, she needs to get back to headquarters, because everything is frozen. Have you ever been there? Everything is frozen, right? And she's trying to get back, and, and she runs into Bing Bong, who is an imaginary friend of Riley's from childhood. And Bing Bong, it turns out to be an ally, and he's trying to get her back to, to, uh, to, to headquarters, and, and they're on the train of thought when crazy stuff happens in Riley's life again, and everything crashes in her brain, and the train goes down, and they end up in the dump. And the dump is this deep canyon of thoughts that are disintegrating, of memories that are disintegrating. It's this deep place of hopelessness, and there's no way out. And it's in this place that joy 
finds the purpose of sadness. Watch. Troy, Troy, what are you doing? So did you hear that? Did, did you hear that line? Go ahead. Mom and dad and the team, they helped us because of sadness. Riley, she had, um, it was a sad day because she'd missed the goal that would have given them the championship. And essentially lost the hockey game that was, and it was a playoff game, it was a big deal. And she was all alone in that tree. And she was isolated, and he was shutting down. If her head was down. And yet maybe in that moment she was weeping. Whatever it was, mom and dad and the team saw the sadness and, and could be there for her. We connect with each other in our brokenness. Interesting that God connects with us there as well. It's what the cross is all about. He connects with us in our brokenness.
And, and, and yeah, there's, that's one way to look at it. You have this, um, this other seeing the sadness, and so they can be there for you. God being there for you, and, and others being there for you. But maybe the sadness has to change you first. If you're shut down and can't feel anything, how can you receive anything? It's interesting to me in that, in that clip that joy starts to cry. How could that happen, man? She's joy. How can, how can there be joy with tears, man? But if those tears didn't come, joy would have stayed in that dump. She was disintegrated. She would have been gone. She would have never understood the place of sadness. But her tears, she could see the memories and, and see that there was sadness in these memories. And, and that sadness allowed Riley to receive and, and others to give. Jesus said this. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. We used this picture for the prodigal son last week. Uh, I, I think he was mourning. What do you think? He lost everything sitting with the pigs. You think this was a tearless reunion on his part? Or do you think he was weeping over what could have been? Time and time again in the Old Testament, by the way, God's people are weeping for what could have been, but they screwed up. Have you ever been there? And they've shut down to relationship with God. And before they can receive God's wondrous grace and forgiveness that's always there, they first have to come to that place of tears. Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn. Mourn, mourn for the brokenness all around us and how it's touched our lives. Mourn for the brokenness within me and what I've done to myself and what I've done to those around me. Mourn because nothing's right and everything's broken. Because when we come to that place, we can receive the comfort of God in Jesus Christ. Psalm 50 said, come to me. Come to me. All you have great need, and I will help you. In the New Testament, uh, on Monday Thursday, uh, uh, I, I don't remember that, the account, but, but Jesus warns Peter that before the, the, the rooster crows uh, twice, he's going to deny him three times. And Peter says, no way, no way. And Jesus said, I'm going to pray for you, Peter, that you don't lose your faith. And so later on that night, he's in, he's in the, the courtyard of the high priest, and this little servant girl comes up to him. Nobody to be afraid of, right? And she says, weren't you one of them? And he says, no. He's lying. He's starting to lose himself. He's starting to shut down to who he is in Jesus. Then, then another person comes up, and he's, he says, no, and he, and he has a little oath with it. And then, the, and then the little girl comes up again and says, I, I think you're the one. And with, and with cursing and swearing, says, I don't know the man. And then the rooster clocks. Remember what he did? He went outside and he wept bitterly. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted place of sadness, place of tears. Jesus meets us there. It's always been interesting to me that in one of the greatest valleys, the valley of death, he weeps with those who are weeping. And he weeps with us there. And he's there for us. He rescues us. First John, it says, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to purify us from all unrighteousness. Whether my tears come from 
the brokenness outside of myself or from my brokenness and what I've done. God is there for us and he is faithful in his grace towards us. So I, I, I try to put this into words. I, I See what you think of this. Sin finally isolates us. We, we shut down, huh? We lose who we are. We lose the image of God. We shut down. But embracing sadness, our tears, wakes us up again so we can receive. That's what sadness did for Riley. I, I mean, it's so interesting, these movies, they, the stories we tell, they, they always get it some of the truth in them. That's what the Spirit of God would give to us. Hearts that embraced the tears that we can receive the comfort. So in, in the film, the very next thing, in the, uh, it, it's tied to the next, we start the very next second of this next clip. And, and I, I want to do that because what follows is something that the very first time I saw it, I went, whoa, this is crazy. This is amazing. Man, this is something that they would do it this way. So as you watch this next part of the clip, they're still in the dump. They want to try to get out. Uh, they, they, they remember uh, that uh, part of uh, Bing Bong, you know, he, he was an imaginary friend. They, they were going to fly to the moon with, on a wagon with wings, and, and, and that's in the dump too, and they're going to try to get out. But watch how that's accomplished, and try to think why it would amaze me, even the first time I saw it. All right? Watch. We have...
So what do you think astounded me? In the middle of this animated film, it, it, in a way, as, as you look at it, it doesn't really have to be part of the story. I mean, it really doesn't have to be there. But in the middle of this film, you have this savior figure. He's Bing Bong. And he gives up his, his life. He's fading away. He gives up his life so that Riley could live. Go save her, Joy. Where did that come from? Why was it put in there? And you see this in, in story after story after story. It's as if uh, these brilliant people that put this together, they, they couldn't stay away from the idea of a savior figure. It's like it's embedded in the human condition. That we know something's wrong and we know we need a savior. They could have, you know, really, the whole movie could have been written without that thing. She could have gotten back to headquarters of the sea and fixed everything. You see this again and again in the stories. And if you know down deep that God is there and that you need a savior, I think every human being joins you there. Somehow and somewhere. Because you see this so often. Bottom line here, <laughs> Riley's rescued. And so are we. We're the Savior that laid down his life and yet who picked it up again so he could continue to meet us in those places where we've shut down, where we, where we can't go on, where we're losing ourselves, saving us in exactly those places that bring us to tears. In this last, last little film clip I'm gonna show you, uh, it's right at the end, and, and it, it ties all this together. Uh, a joy gets back to headquarters, and, and you see the tie-in to, to fear that, that the film is struggling with. Um, you see it all, so let's watch it, and we'll talk about it. Go. Oh, thank you.
Mr. Riley is frozen, shut down. Sadness allows her to feel again and to receive. And in that relationship of love, in the midst of the tears, joy is restored. Riley is Riley again. It's what God does for us. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. I want you to know that today. Blessed are those who mourn, for Jesus is always there. And the most amazing thing is that he calls us to be his presence in the lives of others. In their tears, to comfort them. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Right now, who is that someone in your life that you can comfort as Jesus is comforting you? I want to close with this. It's a Psalm 16, not the whole thing, but it starts like this. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, save me. And when I was in great need, he saved me. I'm broken. I need it. I I have tears. Help me. And then he talks to himself. Crazy thing. Be at rest once more, O my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, O Lord, have delivered my soul from death. I think, yeah, there's physical death, but there's death that we saw Riley go through where I lose myself, where I'm shut down. Have you been there? He saves us in that place. And then it says, read the next few words with me that are capitalized. Ready? One, two, three. My eyes from tears. Blessed are those who mourn. My eyes from tears. My feet from stumbling. That I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Riley's rescued, (laughs) and so are we. Would you pray with me? Dearest Jesus, you step into the brokenness of our lives, into our tears. You join us with your tears. And for the joy set before you, the joy of restoring who we are, the joy of restoring our joy again, you went the way of the cross, and now you send us out to experience this same joy as we touch others. Show to each of us what that means in our lives at this moment. Pray in your name. Amen. Let's stand as we worship and sing to our God.
despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus, for our sake, you died. before our God in prayer. (laughs) Praise forever, King of Kings. May we remember that you, Jesus, are seated on the throne. And and this time in our country where it's so easy to get bent by one side or the other, Lord, help us to acknowledge you as Lord and King in our lives. And, And commission us as your people to be about your work here and now and give us the ways that we can respond to what is happening in our world and in our country that your kingdom might move forward your kingdom of glory and grace lord at times we despise tears ours and and others And, and yet those tears are an opportunity for us to come alongside and And through this series, you've told us, taught us, helped us to see what we are to do with those tears. It's an invitation to be your presence, to be your representative of love and grace. It's a cry for help, the help that can come from you. Help us to be near those who are burdened and weary that they might find comfort in you through us. Lord, we pray for all those that are part of our community that are suffering and hurting, uh, that are struggling with relationships and health, and we ask for your healing power to touch their lives. Spirit, light the flame. Light the flame that your people would be a blazing fire for your kingdom and your grace that you might use us to advance your kingdom here and now that the world might know you because of us. And Lord, as we encounter the struggles and the strife in our own lives, Lord, help us to remember that we have a Father, a Father who loves us and is near to us and who invites us to be part of his work. Help us to be part of that work even as we pray as you taught us to pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, got a, a couple of announcements for you, a couple of things. Uh, one of the things is if you're part of a life group, uh, and if you want to be part of our study, pick up your books because you start reading tomorrow. The wor- books are back on the table back there. And uh, also, if you scan this little thing that will also come out today in your email, which your group leader will be sending you, you can listen to all of the daily readings uh, instead of having to read it. And so if you're one of those people that struggles with sitting down with uh, words on page, uh, you can listen and listen to the author read the book. And so those are out there at the welcome table. This is one of the things that we do as a church is we want you to have a book. Uh, If you want to give us something for the book, that's great. You don't need to, but this is one of the things that our offerings go to support is we want people to grow closer to God in Jesus through our work here. And we believe this is part of how that happens is by being in God's word, being in devotion on a regular basis. So we want you to have a book. And if you want to support our mission here, we are, are grateful for your support. It's, it's how we do all that we do, whether it's life groups or mission trips. It, it's all because of the generosity of God's people here in this place. And so there's a few different ways that you can give. Uh, you can give uh, in person in the boxes on the way out. You can give by going to stmatthewrockland.com slash give. Uh, you can give by texting the amount to 84321. Or if you're joining us online, that's where we're located. And uh, we would be honored if you wanted to partner together with us in ministry. Uh, more than anything else, we want your heart to be tied to the things of God's kingdom rather than this world. Because those are the things that are eternal. I invite you to join me in a word of prayer as we pray that God would bless our offerings this day. Lord, um, we ask that you would bless what we give this day, that you would bless the giver that gives this day, that that you would little by little move their hearts from the things of this world to the things of your kingdom, and that, that your word and your message might go out and your kingdom might advance because of your work among us. Gracious Lord, we pray this this day, asking for your hand of blessing and multiplication on all that we do and all that we give for the sake of your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, amen. Uh, a couple of things coming up. We have all kinds of events here at uh, St. Matthew. Uh, some of the events that we have are very, very family-friendly, and there are some events that aren't as family-friendly. Uh, this might be one of those for some people. This is Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest is this next weekend. It is a great time. It is family-friendly unless you have a problem with alcohol. And if that is the case, we don't want to be a stumbling block. So don't feel guilty if you're not coming. Don't feel like we're twisting your arm. But it's going to be a fun event. We're going to have bratwursts and hot dogs and uh, bounce house and cornhole and all sorts of good stuff. Be a great time for us to hang out as a family, have conversation. And it's also a great place to uh, invite a friend that that maybe doesn't know Jesus. And we can show them that Christians know how to fun too. So come along, have a fun time. Uh, And the proceeds from this are going to support uh, Mercy Holistic Ministry. And so they're one of our ministry partners and they do showers for uh, people in um, Sacramento and help uh, homeless people in the Sacramento area get back up on their feet. Uh, They're the ones that we often give bikes to. Uh, Also, we have uh, Feed My Starving Children coming up. Uh, That is coming up in October, October 17th through 19th. This is a whole community activity where we get together with the whole family of God in the Rockland, Roseville, Lincoln area to make a difference around the world feeding hungry kids. So sign up for a spot. It's a great hands-on activity that uh, people of all ages, shapes, and sizes can do. No matter where you're at, whether little or tall, uh, you can be part of this, and it's a great family fun activity. I have one of my favorite pictures is a picture of Bo pushing a dust mop with gloves that are way too big. So bring, them, bring anybody and everybody. It'll be a great time of us serving together as God's people here in this place. And then Trunk or Treat is coming up just around the corner. Trunk or Treat is our opportunity to invite our community out and connect with people that are looking for candy at this time of year. And uh, we will have some. So it'll be an opportunity for us to connect with uh, whoever God sends our way and just an opportunity for us to introduce ourselves to them 
uh, that we might connect with the people that God sends across our path and uh, open up the door for God's word and uh, his kingdom to come to their lives. And then, um, yeah, that's all I got. With that, I invite you to stand uh, for the benediction and our closing song. May you know the incredible love of the Father that embraces you no matter where you are. And you, may you know that that love of God is real for you because of the grace shown in his son Jesus who met you in the valley of despair. And may his spirit make that real to you each and every day as you walk in his power and his peace. Go in the power and peace of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Books.